Hello there. Today we're going to look at dynamic arrays in C. First I want to cover what is a dynamic array. Well, if you've used other languages like JavaScript, for example, you might see something like this, where you declare an array, and then you can set a value into any index, and it will just work. Under the hood, JavaScript is resizing the array that you've declared to be able to fit at least 70 values, or exactly 70 values in this case. The first 69 will be blank. In C, if you try to initialize an array without a size, you're going to get this error that there's a size missing in my array. So you might end up doing something like this, where you declare an array with a size, and then you try to write outside of the array. So in this case, our array only has 10 indices, but we're assigning to index 69 the value 420. That is undefined behavior, and it might actually work, which is why this can be confusing for new C programmers. So this might work, and you may even be able to print out the value straight away and see that it is 420. Now, the reason this is undefined behavior is because it's up to the compiler to decide what to do, which is, in my opinion, kind of stupid, uh, but that's kind of a topic for another time. So what this actually does is it gets the memory address of your array, and then it goes forward 69 ints, and then it puts this value 420 in there. Now, because your array is not actually taking up all of that space, when you start making new variables and calling other functions and stuff, uh, the program might just use that memory and then it will override the value that's in there. So this is not safe. This could become junk at any time later in your program. Now I want to show you a C++ example. So C++ people realize that this is a problem, that dynamic arrays are pretty useful. So they added this thing called a vector which I believe now they have said the name was a big mistake. But anyway, they have this dynamic array type called a vector. And you can declare a vector, you can resize it, and then you can set the value to whatever you want. Pretty good, right? So why don't we just use C++? Well, one reason is because compile times in C++, it's kind of a meme, but even just this tiny program where the C is 235 lines, and the C++ is 111, and they do the same thing, the compile time is double. So in my eyes, that's just not acceptable. Now you might think that a difference of 0.9 of a second is not enough to worry about. However, if you're doing something like hot reloading, you make an application, you compile it to a DLL and you load that, and then you want to change some data or whatever and see it instantly, well, you're going to have to wait an extra second. How many times are you going to do that every day? I don't know, hundreds, thousands, it adds up over time. So I think compile times are much more important than people make them out to be. So can we just use C? Obviously I prefer C, but it doesn't have a dynamic array type. I really like dynamic arrays, they're very useful. Well, as it turns out, there's a couple of ways we can make them in C. And I'll show you the first way that I made one a couple of years ago. That's not how I'm doing it now, but I'll just show you how that works real quick. This is kind of the naive approach where you think, okay, I need an array. So C has these things called void pointers, and they're kind of like generic types in other languages. Not really, but you kind of like removing the type. Like there's something here, we don't know what it is. So we make an array type, give it a length, a capacity, and then we're gonna store the size of the items in it so that we can figure out how to get things out of it later. And then a pointer to somewhere in memory where we can store all the items. Great, well, what does that look like? Maybe we want to initialize an array like this. Pass in an item size and the initial capacity. Return a struct. Just use malloc to make it simple in this example. And there we have it. We've got an array. It's dynamically allocated, as in allocated on the stack. It's not a dynamic array yet. But, you know, after you implement an append function, which I'm not going to flesh out here, but that will have something like a realloc in there, which will move the memory if there's not enough space. And then you want a function to get the values out of the array. So you probably use something like array at, kind of like the C++ at method. And that would just give you a pointer to the data. And that worked pretty well. You can have a look at the usage code here. So we just initialize the array, get the size of the int, and we pass that in. And let's say we want to start with 64 values, and then we just want to append a bunch. Let's just say we're appending a bunch of values here. And then later in the program, for some reason, we want to sum all the values together and we want to store the smallest value that we added. We can just loop over the array using array length, which is pretty convenient. But then we get to this line. And this line is a little bit gross. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it, but we have to 
we have to cast the return value of the array at function, which is a void pointer, remember, into the type that we want, which is an int pointer. And then we have to dereference it with the asterisk. And we've got to store that in a local variable. Or we've got to use, you know, the whole right side of this everywhere we want to use the value. So usually when we um, use arrays in other languages or even in, in C, we're used to using the two brackets, not something like this. So the rest of the function goes as usual. But I don't really like this. I don't think it's very ergonomic. I like the two brackets. What can I say? So how can we get that? How can we get the ergonomic value, keep the dynamicness? Let's have a look. This is how I want it to work. So we declare an array and we get back an array of that type, which is in C just a pointer. So it's a pointer to an int, it's a pointer to a bunch of ints. That's basically how arrays work. Now in this example, we're passing out a pointer to an allocator. I'm not going to go over the allocators in the video, but you can check it out on Substack later. All right, so now we want to append a bunch of things. We append a bunch of things to the array, just like before. We want to find the same things just as before. Now here is where it gets a little bit icky. It's where we have to make a little bit of a trade-off. So in this implementation, we've got a macro called array length, and that's what we use to get the length of the array. But the upside is we get the subscript access back, which is the two brackets. So it can access the values directly using the square brackets, which is nice. And the rest of the loop follows as you might expect. Very great. So how does this work? Well, here is the, well, here is the struct type. It's kind of like the array type, except instead of storing the values, we just don't store them here. What we do is we store the metadata, like the capacity and the length. We don't need the item size in this version because when we pass in the type to the macro, we get a typed pointer back. So we already know the size, or rather we already know the type. We pass it in a pointer to an allocator. This could just be your own memory allocator, or it could be malloc or something. Well, not malloc directly, but we'll go into that shortly. And then using this header, we basically allocate enough space for the header and the items. So let's say we want to allocate a default size of 64 or 16. I usually use 16. So we allocate enough space for 16 of whatever the type is that we passed in, plus the header. So the header sits at the front. And then what we do is we just increment that pointer by the value of the header. And now I've got a pointer to the first item. And then we return that from the init function. That gives us the pointer to the array. But we keep the header memory around. So we kind of keep the head, the metadata of the array at the beginning. So, you know, when you add things onto the end of this, the metadata is still going to be at the front there. It's pretty nice. Let's have a look at a bit of the implementation. All right, here we've got the array macro. Now it has to be a macro because C doesn't allow you to pass types around into functions. You can't have like a type parameter, unfortunately. So we pass the type into the macro. And then the macro actually casts the return type of the function we're going to check out in a second, which is just below there, into the type that we passed in. So if we pass in an int, it'll cast the void pointer to an int pointer. That's how we get the array back. And then it'll use the size of, and then it will determine the size of the type by using size of, and then use the array initial capacity define, um, which could be whatever you want. In my case, I usually use 16 and then the allocator pointer. As I said before, that's what I use, but you could just leave that out. Now let's check out the array init function. So it's pretty similar to the other one. It takes an item size and a capacity and an allocator. This is the pointer we're gonna return. So we just set it to zero so that if our allocation fails, we return zero at the end there. We calculate the size. And remember, this is the size of the items that we're gonna store, the initial capacity plus the header. So the metadata, which is the length capacity and the allocator pointer. And now we want to allocate the memory. So we're using a custom allocator here, but you could just use malloc if you want. But the reason we're turning it into an array header pointer is because that's what we're going to store right at the front. So we say we want a block of memory. The type is array header. And if that works, then we can set the capacity, set the length, set the allocator pointer, and then we can just increment that by one, which will actually move that pointer, the H pointer, to the item like that. So it'll just increment it down and then we'll be looking at the item. And then we return that from the function. That's pretty cool, right? All right, so that's all well and good. But this looks like a lot of overhead. 
you know, maybe we should just use the C++ vector. Don't worry about all this C macro stuff. I mean, vectors surely made by some really, you know, clever people. They've probably optimized it. It's probably way faster, etc. Well, you'd be surprised. There's nothing really in this code that makes it slow. So it's actually comparable. In some cases, it's faster. In some cases, it's slightly slower. But in this screenshot here, all of the test cases were faster, but just full disclosure, that's not always the case, but it's always around the same. So this is a bunch of tests that I put together. I'm not gonna show you the tests right now because it's like 200 lines of code or something, but you know, it's got appending, popping the back, which is removing the last element, random access, random insert, and unordered remove, which is when you choose, let's say um, you've got an array of 20 things, and then you wanna remove the 10th one. Well, instead of removing the 10th one and then shifting everything down, you just swap the 10th one with the last one and then decrease the length by one. I didn't do an ordered remove um, just because I ran out of time, but and I don't really use that, but you can add one yourself. I'm sure the speed would be comparable to C++. All right, I think that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about this and see the full implementation, you can check out my substack at bytesbeneath.com. It's got the full code and a bit more of an explanation going a bit more in depth. But I just wanted to share this with you guys to let you know that dynamic arrays are possible in C. I want to give a special thanks to Sean Barrett of the STB header library fame who mentioned in one of his streams this trick that I used where you put the metadata first and then you put the data structure after. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.